So welcome after lunch. So I have the the, the nice ta task <laughs> to give the presentation right after lunch. But I hope that that the topic might be uh, very interesting for you. And um, uh, just just to give, give an introduction, and it fits well. So who um, I don't know heard from yesterday from. The IT Gipfel. I don't know how to translate IT the Gipfel, <laughs> but our Kanzler yesterday um, uh, said um, in her talk at that IT Gipfel that we shouldn't go within the new European privacy uh, law, not too strong, so that we are in Europe still able. Uh, to work on data analytics and big data. So that was for me very, very interesting to hear that yesterday. And into that direction, my, my presentation is going. So what we see at the moment with, with the current law is that um, if you have data within different parts of your company, or if you have data in one company um, and would like to share it with another company, you always have the problem with, with the privacy thing. Um, like the law is the privacy law in Germany. It is not the strongest in Europe, so Hungary has the strongest law concerning privacy in Europe, but it is uh, for most of the applications a problem. And when we, we came to the topic data analytics six years, uh, six years ago, so we started first with doing like the normal um, anonymization, like everyone is doing it, and with one of our uh, topics, we had to go into the privacy um, board of Deutsche Telekom four times. And every th time I went there, they always asked me, is there this one person traveling from Bonn to Berlin um, every week, and then I'm still able to do a repersonalization. And that was the reason for this, this project, Synthetic Data. So it's still a research project, because I'm coming from the research department of Deutsche Telekom, but we already went into it. So what, what I put here just, just for introduction is that, and I already told you the, the experience and lessons learned we, we had with, with the topic, that you have like the standard um, anonymization approaches, um, like you, you probably do it in your company or in, in your work. So you can do different things to do really the anonymization and depending on, on what you want and how strong you want to do the anonymization. You have the problem, like you see it on, on this slide here, that you have like the perfect anonymity and the privacy department would be very happy to see that. On the other hand side, you want to get inside out of the data and there sh should still be, be useful. And you have to, to twist between these two things really useful or really a perfect anonymization. And um, the, the, the major thing here, and I just put one example, is that and that's going into the direction from the pri privacy board of Deutsche Telekom. Um, if you have anonymized data, um, and you are sure this data is anonymized. If you combine it with other data, like here in the Netflix example, uh, it could be that then a repersonalization of that person is possible. And uh, here, the example we put here is really um, the, the anonymized Netflix data together with the public data from the IMBD database and then it was possible to, rep to um, repersonalize the, the different um, uh, customers from, from the Netflix data. So you always have the risk, the more data you are combining together, uh, that you're losing really the, the anonymization. Um, so that, that was the reason that we said, okay, what could we do? Um, to, to really uh, have a strong, strong anonymization and go some one step further. 
And when you go to anonymization, you are just throwing away a little bit of the information. What is if you really go into creating completely new data sets? And that's the, the um, approach behind the synthetic data. And as introduction, I have a ma more marketing video. I hope it will show. <laughs> okay. We explain the advantages of synthesized data. This is Frank. He's working for a big company and is always looking for new business opportunities. In most cases, Frank could use existing data to collect useful information. With this kind of information, Frank could easily generate new lines of business or improve existing ones. Like many others, Frank would like to use existing customer data. But without a declaration of consent from the customer, he is not allowed to use the data that's right in front of him. Additionally, the personal data is legally owned by a different part of Frank's company and therefore can't be transferred. This is due to the company's rules, privacy laws and has ethical reasons as well. Frank knows the customer's privacy must be protected at all times. So what can he do to use this valuable data anyway? Well, Frank could anonymize the data. But with some effort, the data could be traced back to its origin. The customer could be identified. Frank absolutely wants to avoid troubles with data protection. Is there nothing he can do? The solution to Frank's problem is as simple as that. Synthesized data. How does it work? Through a mathematical algorithm, the existing data records are abstracted and turned into new synthetic records. They cannot be traced back to their origin. That is the unique advantage of synthesized data. It can be stored in any way and transferred to Frank so he can finally use the data. It's of the same quality as the original, but without the legal troubles. Frank is happy. Thanks to synthesized data, he has access to the information he needs, avoiding any privacy concerns. Perfect. Interested? Get in touch with us now or visit SyntheticData.com for more information. Uh, just just to, to just say it again, who's probably not in the topic, so if you do really an anonymization of the data set, you are throwing away the personal data within the data set. With our synthetic data approach, we're throwing away the complete data set. So we're generating complete new data um, and throwing away the original one. And just to give a, a short, brief overview um, how we are doing it is um, that we are uh, taking patterns within the da original data set and from this pattern we are generating statistical features and we are using these statistical features to generate a completely new data set who has from the statistical point of view the same um, statistical features as the original one but the data is completely different so for example if you have within the original data set a person i don't know marion miller living in berlin waldstrasse or whatever uh, in Seelendorf, then in the synthetic data set, you, you probably would have a person calling Gudrun Meyer living Waldstraße 1 instead of 5 and uh, living in, in Seelendorf, but, but a, a different. And if you look at the, the overall statistics, it's similar, but the original data set is completely different. So um, I already said some 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 things. Of what 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 you can gain here, and what you cannot gain here with with that one. Um, so if you look at at the first thing, so if you have really something that you want to do it fast and, and very easy with with not so much effort, so you probably go into the standard anonymization approach. Uh, again, real time. Um, if you really want to go into individual things, again, anonymization. If you want to share data, 
between different data sets, or if you want to combine data set, then we will say, okay, it's better to do the synthetization of the data because you're not able or you're still in danger with, with the anonymization at that point. You can store it, uh, have no problem there because it, it's really synthetic data. Uh, you have a complete protection of the individual person and you are losing not the um, data within the data sets because you still have like the statistics you need for analyzing that kind of data. And just uh, what, what we did and just a very brief overview, uh, we, uh, we implemented the algorithm and we tested this with our own data, with uh, the call record data. And we checked here on the first hand side, we checked how similar are the original data set and the synthetic data set. And you, it, you see here on the, on the left hand side that it's very, very close together. So we put different activities of the data set here, so different features, and they are very similar. And on the right hand side, we used another test where you, uh, from, from the questioning, um, you asked them, um, if I have a data set and just put the two data sets together and now putting single data sets out of that data set. I am a, are I'm able to say, is this a synthetic data set or is this an original data set? And we did that. And if you um, uh, are not able to decide between the two, then, then um, that is very good. And that was our second test. So uh, just, just uh, to, to summarize it a little bit, is that with the original, uh, with the synthetic data, you have data sets who are very close to the original one without the data privacy issues you have if, if you want to share data between different data sources and combining data from your own company with, with other data. Uh, we have 100% uh, privacy protection here and uh, you can store it um, as long as, as you want to do. And what we did, we already tested it uh, with our own data, with the CR CDR data, and we tested this with the taxi data. And the question for all these <laughs> question in that round would be, if you are interested in that approach, we are still looking for data sets to test that approach and to really verify how good this is working. Um, so if, 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 you have, if you are interested, just come to me and we are, I'm, I'm happy to talk about it and, and just um, checking if this could work for your data sets. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? <laughs>